I've been thinking for a while that, hey, maybe this, this concept, this way of thinking deserves its own paradigm, and I just came up with this name, which is terrible and very mouthful. I call it Critical Path to Driven Development, or CPDD now, but I'm open for suggestions. Um, so the, the, the goal here is, like, what it means is the availability of the underlying services or the you know, processes is not the goal. The availability of the, those critical paths that users are engaging with is, is the goal. Um, just like the New York example, I care about walking from Central Park to Times Square. Being able to, I think, think and see your architectures from this perspective is, is, um, is extremely different than anything we do right now as an industry. But it's, we've also learned over time that it's actually very useful. Some of our engineering principles are around um, some of these concepts. Uh, for example, we try to discover critical paths automatically. The next thing we want to do is like, we want to make them reliable, and we want to optimize them, make them fast. It's a big part of the user experience. And we want to make them debuggable. You know, if, it's, if you're on call, if you're unfortunately it's the middle of the night or something, I want you to be able to see everything end to end and give you as much as data um, so even if you're not familiar with the system, you should be able to do something about it. So cool, how we get there? Um, I would say that like, there are two main emerging technologies in the industry nowadays. We actually hear them in the um, context of observability. The first one is event collection. The second one is distributed tracing. Uh, we use distributed traces at Google, but these are very t similar tools. Um, Facebook is, for example, using event collection. And I want to ask a question. Do you know the golden rule of like, exploring cause-effect um, cause relationships? It's this ability to you know, ask, keep asking why, hey, did, why this happens, why that happens, and like, keep asking until you figure out the root cause. And um, I think traces and events sort of like a tool to do the same thing with your systems. You just keep asking, and it's, it allows you to go deeper in your stack and find the actual uh, root cause. And this is what a distributed trace looks like, by the way, if you haven't seen one. It's, it's an um, HTTP endpoint. It tells you the latency, the flow, the exact co components along the way. So you can look at this ROS to learn about you know, the life of a request. And as well as uh, we can use the data coming from our production to debug issues that is affecting our users. So our stack nowadays is just like, you know, full of different layers, and it's getting more complex over time. I would like to say that like, these concepts and tools around it is actually a teaching tool. You don't need to learn about the implementation details of the entire stack. You, we may have actually a lot of more control about, the, uh, about our processes and what goes into that, uh, because we so sort of control. But anything underneath it is usually a black box for most of us. And if your infrastructure was providing some sort of visibility to you from the lower layers, it actually revolutionized um, you know, our industry because it's, it's becoming easier to you know, be an expert. Or maybe the definition of being an expert may change. Uh, imagine, for example, Kubernetes was able to you know, provide you some like, significant events along the user re request. Then you don't have to learn about the Kubernetes internals that much. You don't have to read the, you know, the source code or uh, the documentation. What you basically can do is take, take a look at your traces and understand what is going on.